Natural gas. It sounds great, right? Who wouldn't want something that's natural? Sure, it's naturally occurring, and that's the tricky part because just because something is naturally occurring doesn't mean it's good. So what is natural gas? Why do we use it in the first place? Should we be using something else instead? Let's discuss. Hello everyone, it's Emma, and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist. This is a topic that I have seen growing in popularity over the years. I have seen environmentalists like sing the praises of natural gas and I'm like, it's a fossil fuel, right? Why are environmentalists saying it's great? But also because it's in our homes. It's in our stoves, it's in our drying machines. So I wanted to know, should I also be singing the praises of this fossil fuel? Or is their hype maybe a little inaccurate? If you prefer reading along or you just like reading, I do have a blog post version for this post linked down below. Now let's talk about what even is natural gas. Despite its green sounding name, natural gas is made from fossil fuels and is an energy source. It contains a variety of compounds, but it is mostly composed of methane, which is a very, very potent greenhouse gas. Methane is worse than CO2 by about 80 times, and you can learn more about why methane is so bad in this video about food waste. But natural gas is also composed of carbon dioxide and vapor, water vapor. So it's kind of a double whammy in the greenhouse gas category. Let's get a little bit into the science about how natural gas is formed, where does it come from, how do we get it, and so forth. Similar to other fossil fuels, hence the name, natural gas is made from fossils. It is formed millions to hundreds of millions of years ago from the remains of plants and animals. They build up in layers over the Earth's surface, which are mixed with things like sand, salt, and calcium carbonate. As the layers build up, so does the pressure and heat, which change some of the carbon and hydrogen into coal, some change into oil, and others change into natural gas. But where is natural gas found? Similar to its siblings, coal, oil, other fossil fuels, natural gas is found embedded in rocks underground. Sometimes it is found in large cracks and large pockets, and other times it's found like in the teeny tiny little pores of a rock. It is often found in shale, sedimentary rock, as well as sandstone. All, all of these are very porous types of rock. And this is why it's also sometimes referred to as shale gas or tight gas. That's kind of a weird name. I'd, I've never heard that before, but I wanted to include it anyway. Natural gas can also be seen in conjunction with crude oil deposits. Natural gas is found like any other fossil fuel. Can you see the theme here? They're all very similar. Geologists use seismic surveys over land and over the ocean. Once a pocket is detected, they must make sure the amount of natural gas can be profitable. You don't wanna lose a profit, do you? Big oil, big fossil fuel. <laughs> and then the fracking begins. Now I could make an entire video on fracking alone and if you would like me to, definitely let me know down below when I can. But in short, fracking is when you break into the earth's crust, break into the rocks underground. So that way oil and natural gas can be released from those cracks. And we'll talk more about the environmental impacts of fracking just a little bit later on. Once it is released by the fracking, it flows to the surface, from the surface to a pipeline and from a pipeline to a processing facility. After that, the water and the non-hydrocarbon compounds are removed from the mix. Once it is dry, it is ready to use. Once it's ready to use, it's sent back into a pipeline and then sent to distribution facilities. Now that we know how natural gas works, where it's found and all that, why do we even use it? Is it really better than other fossil fuels? Natural gas is used as an energy source and it is everywhere. It's used to power our cars, to heat our homes, to cook our food, to dry my laundry. It's really popular in the Southwest and I, I don't know why. I have never really seen natural gas until I moved here and everything, everything runs on natural gas here. And we're renters so we can't really help it. Like we can't just get a new stove if we want to. But natural gas has been used since ancient times. I was really surprised with this. Um, it reminds me of when I was talking about the history of plastic, which you can watch up here. I thought natural gas, like plastic, was a relatively new invention, but plastic has been used for hundreds of years, um, and natural gas has been used for thousands of years. Crazy. Records date back as far as 1000 BC, but it didn't start its commercial use until 1785 in Britain, as all good things, as all capitalist colonial things. And shortly after that, it followed suit in the brand new United States in Baltimore, Maryland. And today, natural gas supplies over 50% of the energy consumed by all residential and commercial customers worldwide, and it's about 41% in the US. That is way more than I thought. Most sources boast about how clean it is for a fossil fuel. They rarely include that caveat. They're like, wow, look at this clean energy source. Clean for a fossil fuel, sure, I'll give them that, but it's not clean energy by any means. You really can't call burning methane clean or green energy. I don't know how they can get away with this, especially as it is one of the most potent, if not the most potent greenhouse gas causing climate change. And I think this is where the hype gets lost in translation. I really hope that these environmentalists are actually digging into this and not just saying like, oh, it's clean energy. But I think a lot of people forget that caveat. It is clean 
for a fossil fuel. Though in Europe, I found an article that I was reading to do research for this video, they do classify natural gas as green energy, which is just blows my mind. Now it's very nuanced. Natural gas actually has kept the US on track to reduce our carbon emissions. And I think that's because <laughs> it's methane. So while our carbon emissions are going down, we're burning more methane to reduce our carbon. I don't see how that's a win situation. It seems like a lose-lose to me because methane is more potent. I, I just simply cannot wrap my mind around why this is a good thing. Not to mention, the longer that we rely on fossil fuels, the harder it's going to be to get away from them completely, which we need to do eventually. We don't need to do it right this second, but we do need to slowly wean off of fossil fuels and we're not gonna be able to do that if we just switch from one fossil fuel to another. Do I wish we were burning coal and oil instead? Absolutely not. But do we need to make the swap away from fossil fuels completely one day? Yes. Now I'm no climate scientist, I'm no energy specialist. This is just my opinion as an environmental activist, but I do think it's possible to get fully on a clean energy, true clean energy one day. According to UCS USA, natural gas does emit 50 to 60% less CO2 than coal. But keep in mind, natural gas is mostly methane. I, this doesn't make any sense to me. I think this is, this is just some backwards logic. Maybe it's not backwards, but it's just, nobody's reading the fine print, I feel like. They're just looking, it all comes back to greenwashing. Um, and if you wanna check out my full video on how to spot greenwashing, you can check it out up here. But it's, it's like a combination of tactics of, the lesser of two evils, um, the pros don't outweigh the cons, as well as just being deceptive and they're not giving us the full story. So of course its CO2 emissions are going to be drastically lower than coal and oil, it's mostly methane. Natural gas also emits 15 to 20% fewer heat trapping gases than gasoline when burned in a standard car. Now I think this number is a bit more accurate because both methane and CO2 are considered heat trapping gases. This source, which I really, really love them for, also mentions that we need to look at the full picture, not just CO2 emissions, because that's clearly inaccurate. What this means is we need to look at more than just burning natural gas. We need to look at natural gas leaks, which appear to be quite common. These numbers are typically only looking at the burning of natural gas and not the creation, the exporting, the, the transporting, the leaks, and so forth. This recent study found that methane losses must be less than 3.2% in order for natural gas power plants to have lower life cycle emissions than a coal power plant. So if they lose, and by lose, they mean like losing in a leak, if they lose more than 3.2% than methane, then f natural gas is worse than coal. And there was actually just a natural gas leak um, outside of Las Vegas. I think it was a, a pipeline coming into Las Vegas to give us natural gas. This was pretty recent, um, what, early February? I guess you're seeing this in April. <laughs> and I assume that's an annual number. So we're already losing a lot of natural gas already this year. And as with all the other greenwashing tactics we talked about in that video, when we're looking at natural gas, we need to look at the whole picture and not just how it burns. I know we said we need to look at the full picture, but let's keep looking at the emissions. Natural gas still produces nitrogen oxide, though at a lower level than gasoline and diesel, but nitrogen oxides are a precursor to smog, um, which if you don't know what smog is, it's essentially fog that's contaminated with air pollutants. The DOE analyses indicate that every 10,000 US homes powered with natural gas instead of coal avoids the annual emissions of 1,900 tons of nitrogen oxides, 3,900 tons of SO2, which again, I'm not a scientist, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Here's what SO2 is. And 5,200 tons of particulates. What this means is ultimately cleaner air and fewer emissions, which leads to fewer respiratory issues. But that of course hinges on the fact that we're reducing other fossil fuel usage. What, it, what this means is because we're burning more natural gas, we're burning less oil, which is a good thing, burning less oil. That doesn't mean that burning this is good. It is slightly better. Obviously it's reducing our air pollutants, but if even if we reduce fossil fuels, even if we reduce oil all the way, and we're only per, still burning natural gas, we're still gonna have air pollution. But again, this is only when natural gas is burned. Where natural gas is extracted from the ground is a whole other story. Areas that have been subjected to drilling have seen increases in hazardous air pollutants. Exposure to these can lead to respiratory and cardiovascular issues. Without a whole essay on these other topics, here's briefly how natural gas is affecting other areas of our life when it comes to wildlife, health, and so forth. Just like with other fossil fuels, the construction and land destruction from all of these drilling projects is very harmful to wildlife, to ecosystems, to biodiversity. And this can destroy protected lands. Of course, leaks can cause air and water pollution. 
as well as get into our soil, cause acid rain, cause air pollution, I already said air pollution, it's just really bad if it leaks. Hydraulic fracking uses so much water and then that water is contaminated so that water can't even be reused. Fracking has also been linked to low magnitude earthquakes. And of course, burning natural gas is still burning a fossil fuel. It's not clean. It's still gonna lead to air pollution, even if it is less air pollution. So now the big question, should we still be using natural gas? Is natural gas actually this miracle fossil fuel that all these environmentalists are talking about? This is my opinion. This is, I couldn't find any good sources on should we keep using natural gas? And I would love to hear your thoughts on this down below. I don't see how environmentalists are hyping it up. I can, I mean, I can understand that because it burns cleaner than oil and coal, we should be using it if we should be using a fossil fuel, which we shouldn't. We should get off of fossil fuels as fast as we can. And even the pros, like they barely outweigh the cons. It's just a baby step better, in my opinion. I don't think the pros are good enough to be giving all this praise to natural gas. Should we use it in place of oil and coal for the time being? Sure, for the time being. We shouldn't be using them in place of coal and oil forever. We should be switching to solar and hydro and wind and maybe even nuclear. I think nuclear might even be better. In my mind, and again, maybe I'm just misunderstanding this. And to be clear, I did go into this with an open mind. I'm like, maybe my mind will be changed. I don't think my biases got in the way. But that being said, I don't think a fossil fuel can fix climate change. I don't think a fossil fuel can fix air pollution and water pollution at XYZ. It's surely a good stepping stone as we work on ramping up solar and wind and other actually green and renewable and clean energy sources. But natural gas is not a solution. It's not the solution, that's for sure. I just don't see how we can be burning a fossil fuel to save the planet, to reduce climate change. You can learn more about green energy myths and the myths that I bust in this video. But ultimately, true clean energy is the way of the future. It pays itself off, it quickly becomes carbon neutral, and even that's nuanced because eventually, if we have enough solar and wind, we can make more solar and wind energy with solar and wind, meaning it's always carbon neutral and always carbon, carbon negative, which means it's actually a solution for climate change, not burning fossil fuels. I don't think we need to outright ban natural gas right now. And in fact, I think if we do ban natural gas right now, we'll just fall back to coal and oil, which is worse. I'll give, I'll give natural gas that. But I don't think we should keep drilling and keep starting new natural gas extraction operations. Now, what I do really think we need to do is change the name. The name is super misleading and uh, very greenwashy. It's marketing and the marketing truly is genius if you look at it from their standpoint. It's a little malicious and evil if you look at it from like an environmentalist standpoint. Big Oil knows exactly what they're doing. They know that the word natural will invoke positive feelings about this fossil fuel. And they also use that half phrase, it burns clean, parentheses small print for a fossil fuel that they almost never mention because they know they know not to mention it. So what we can do for the time being is continue to spread the message that natural gas is a fossil fuel. It does not burn clean, um, it's not green energy, and it still produces harmful methane and CO2 emissions, which are key greenhouse gases that are responsible for climate change. Other than that, we can write to our governments. I have a bunch of letter writing videos that will be linked above and below if you wanna get started writing to your governments today. Write to them to actually take climate change seriously, to actually break up with fossil fuels, to quit new drilling projects. And also do your part in not supporting big oil as much as you can. And I have a great video on that. This is 10 ways to reduce your reliance on fossil fuels without having to give up your car. If you can give up your car, that's great, but not all of us can. So that's why I made that video. And there will be a part two in the near future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time, especially if you made it all the way to the end. This is something that has been weighing on me a lot recently. I'm like, why are these environmentalists praising this fossil fuel? And I hope that this helped kind of expand on that get to the truth a little bit. Again, I am no expert. If you have more resources, more knowledge on this topic, please leave it down below for the rest of us. And please share this video with others to spread the message that natural gas really isn't all it's cracked up to be. If you found any value in this video, definitely leave it a thumbs up and leave your questions down below for natural gas and other fossil fuels and climate solutions. But I appreciate your time. I will see you in next week's video. Until then, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. After that, the water vapor and the non-hydrogen hydrocarbon. Today, natural gas supplies over 50% of energy, but do we need to make the fall? <sighs> According to UCS USA, natural gas does, <laughs> as both methane and CO2 are considered, <laughs> these numbers typically are only measuring the burning of methane. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, natural gas. Natural gas still produces nitrous oxide, nitrogen oxide, <laughs> not nitrous oxide. I think those are different. I actually don't know. I'm not a scientist. Though at a lower level than gasoline and diesel, avoids the annual emissions of 1,900 tons of nitrous oxide. Nitrogen oxide, dang it. 